Today I want to talk to you about these felt Easter eggs that we made. My name's Sharon, welcome back to my channel. I'd also love to hear from you guys. If you use some alternatives to plastic Easter eggs, let me know in the comments below what you use. Okay, so I was looking to try to get away from plastic, um, getting into zero waste and things like that. So I took a look at Etsy and Amazon and I found that there were a couple of common options. The first one was felt Easter eggs and the other one were wooden Easter eggs. Unfortunately, both of these were kind of expensive. I think for the wooden Easter eggs, it was about three or four dollars a piece, and I wanted to get a couple dozen Easter eggs, um, and the felt Easter eggs were a little bit cheaper, but they're pre pretty expensive. So um, I found my mom had some fabric scraps and I was looking through them and she had some felt. So what we did is I made my own pattern. And I have two patterns that I wanna show you guys. So one is a big Easter egg. So we have Easter eggs like this, and these are pockets. So what happens is you can put the candy inside here, or whatever you're putting inside, and there's a pocket here and a pocket in the bottom, like a broken egg, and then you have a color in the back. So I got a piece of butcher paper, and this is butcher paper that I got from a package. Um, this is stuck inside for the, the packing material. And what I ended up doing was I had folded it into quarters, um, and I simply cut away, like I didn't, uh, you know, measure it or anything like that. I cut away until I got the shape that I wanted. So I ended up with this. And then I took this and I made two other eggs that were similar. And I ended up with this one. I ended up simply folding it down to where I thought I wanted the pocket to be. And then on the other one, I just made like a zigzag pattern. So I ended up with three pieces. So then what I did with fabric is I just cut out the back and then I cut out the other pieces. So you guys, there's three pieces. And I simply, um, if you guys can see here a little bit, um, I did use a red marker. So I made sure that the, the marker that I used around was on the inside for both of the eggs. And then I simply placed the smaller one on the bottom here. Um, and then up here at the top, I placed the zigzag or the zigzag one. And then what I did is I simply zigzagged all around the outside. And sometimes I had to do it more than once. I'm not sure if you guys can see here, but there's a little black here. I had forgotten some spaces. So it's not exactly beautiful or anything like that, but it does function. Um, and I ended up with about two dozen of these smaller ones. And then I already have four of these bigger ones, and I'm going to make a couple more after this. So what I did then, after it was all zigzagged around, we took some more of the scraps that were left over, um, and then we cut them into different pieces. And I let my, my kids do some of them, and I did some of them. So I want to show you what they look like. Um, so my kids did a lot better job than I did. So this is the one I showed you guys at the beginning. This is a bunny. So you can see it's got here. And on the back here, you actually have the bunny tail. So it's very cute. Um, and then there's another one here. So this is supposed to be a little chicken, and it's got the nose and the mouth. Uh, here's another one. I'm not exactly sure what kind of character. I think this is another bunny, but this has eyebrows. There's even some marker for the pupils there. And again, on the back, you've got the little tail. The ones I did were very simple. Um, I simply cut out uh, triangles and stripes on here. And it's a great craft because it takes a long time as well. So this is another one my daughter did. It took her you know, about 10-15 minutes just to cut all this down. And we did use a hot glue gun to glue these down, so I'm sure that's probably not very zero waste, but that is what we did. You could probably also sew them if you have the patience. Or I was actually thinking of just leaving them plain like this. Uh, however, my daughter wanted to decorate them, so I let her decorate them. Now inside, what you guys can put if you have access to bulk bins or something at your local health food store or grocery store, you guys can get candy that way and put it inside. Now I was a little bit worried about the sanitation or the cleanliness of this, um, but then I finally realized, so I've got, my oldest daughter is in school now and I had been using plastic Easter eggs. So I had two or three dozen plastic Easter eggs and what I actually ended up doing with those is I ended up giving them away to a friend who runs a, a local Easter egg hunt. And you know, at the Easter egg hunt, you're only supposed to bring home the number of eggs that you brought. But of course, kids always like hide them in their pockets and things like that. So she's always looking for Easter eggs. So I gave those to her. And I came to realize that all the two years that I had been using Easter eggs, I had never washed or sanitized or anything. So usually when I got the Easter egg from the store, you know, I'd rip off the 
the top where you had it, you know, stapled together or whatever, and I'd take it out of the plastic packaging, then I'd get my candy and I'd just stick it inside. So I figured, you know, if I had been doing that, I could do this as well. I do know, or I've heard that you can wash felt. I haven't tried in cold water. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm probably just gonna be putting bulk candy in here. Another option that you can use is there are some zero waste candies. Um, they use the, the cardboard plastic, sorry, the cardboard packaging. I'm gonna link to those below. You guys can check that out but Dots and Junior Mints are some examples of that. And other people, they just don't use candy, they use other things you can use. Uh, for example, I've heard some people using notes, you know, like putting in um, positive reinforcement or just positive words or notes inside there for their kids to find. You can use little toys or what have you, or you can just leave it, um, you can just leave it empty. It's really up to you. So that is some of the information that I wanted to show you guys about the felt Easter eggs that I made. Like I said in the beginning, now I want to turn it over to you guys. If you are using some kind of alternatives to plastic Easter eggs, let me know what you're using because I know that there are a few. As I mentioned before, I've seen, um, I'm using felt, there's also wooden. I've also seen some cute uh, bunny packages. They're kind of like drawstring packages where you can pull and you've got the bunny ears as well up there. I've seen carrots as well. So there are a lot of options that are starting to pop up every now and then. So please let me know in the comments below because I really enjoy hearing from you guys. Like this video and give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you'd like more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. I will see you guys later.